ಮೇದಿನಿ ವಿಶ್ವ ವಿನೋದಿನಿ ನಂದಿನುತೆ ಶ್ರೀವರವಿಂದ್ಯ ಶಿರೋದಿನಿ ವಾಸಿನಿ ವಿಷ್ಣು ವಿಲಾಸಿನಿ ಜೇಷ್ಣುನುತೆ ಹೈ ಗೈಸ್ Kushal Mehra is back at uh, dissing decoloniality and without i guess fully understanding decoloniality even though he has had invited J Sai Deepak in his podcast and so has Prakar Gupta who with whom he discussed this where we are going to counter his arguments on decoloniality now first disclaimer of course that i absolutely love kushal mehra i agree with him on 99% of things and uh, i think i agree with him on decoloniality without agreeing with his idea of what the word means because he keeps saying he disagrees with decoloniality but you will notice that he already has a very decolonialized mind and therefore i think he does not see the value in this as an instrument of thinking and discussing and discourse and creating discourse for people who are colonialized in their minds because he will say things like अंग्रेज चले गए अंग्रेजियत नहीं गई एपिस्टेमिक रेजिस्टेंस बहुत जरूरी है ही सेट दोज थिंग्स इन इज डिस्कशन विथ प्रखर गुप्ता इन दर प्रीवियस मीटिंग विच आई हैव डिबंक्ट इन एंटायरिटी इन टू पार्ट्स दे आर बोथ अबाउट थर्टी मिनट्स लॉन्ग डू वॉच दैम इट्स कॉल्ड डिबंकिंग रिबटल टू प्रखर के प्रवचन और समथिंग लाइक दैट यू कैन सी इट विन माई प्ले लिस्ट ना हियर अगेन ही मीट्स विथ प्रखर गुप्ता and uh, and shit on decoloniality now the first uh, pr- problem is uh, not problem i think the core solution lies in discussing these things uh, with uh, people who are experts on decoloniality maybe he should sit with asan balagangadhara or jsai deepak and discuss specific issues on where they uh, agree or disagree now one issue they uh, kushal mehra keeps mentioning directly is uniform civil code where jay sai deepak has said that he disagrees and he is a lawyer i'm not uh, worshiping him as an authority figure but he is a lawyer and he must have uh, read the law mo- uh, in a more detailed way and he has some cons- concerns with with it and jay sai deepak and kushal mehra li- really should sort it out and so is abhijit ayer mitra abhijit ayer mitra has said uh, on their uh, hangouts with sham sharma that according to him decoloniality is sounds like the communist manifesto but again abhijit uh, ermitra is also a fiercely independent thinker and already has a very decolonialized mind therefore maybe though they don't see the uh, point of this exercise now let's get into uh, kushal mehra's discussion with prakar and see uh, how uh, he he basically agrees with decoloniality just hates the name for some reason i think he he hates the fact that people are getting into his edgy club of knowing these things that's the only uh, reason i can come up with नहीं तो हम इनको जाके पूछेंगे अच्छा ये एक और बकवास यहाँ पे बहुत होती है कि जी व्हाट इज मोदी डूइंग इन इंडिया मेरे को क्या मालूम मैं यहाँ पे पैदा हुआ मैं यहाँ पे बड़ा हुआ साले मेरे को मेरे बाजू की गली का नहीं मालूम तू मेरे को पूछ रहा है इंडिया में क्या हुआ कि क्या इज एन इटालियन अमेरिकन एवर आस्ट वट बर्सलिनी डेड इज अ जर्मन अमेरिकन एवर आस्ट वट अंगला मर्कल डेड उनको कभी पूछा जाता है क्या ये सो देर दिस इम्बैलेंस एन एसीमेट्री इज लेजिटिमेट नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज वट इज दट सोल्यूशन टू इट द सोल्यूशन इज नॉट डीकोनियलिटी द सोल्यूशन इज इंडिविजुअलिज्म like i have uh, discussed in the previous counter to prakar ke pravachan as well individualism cannot be uh, cannot be cannot occur in a vacuum individualism has to be based on something otherwise there's absolutely zero cohesion of a nation okay and uh, the only example that they can come up with is france and usa where there are very strong individual rights but only because those two nations have a very civilizational identity sense in their minds already it is, which is to say they do individually things which are similar in nature usa has individual rights because all of them the most common uh, habits among white people in america are similar they love a uh, uh, beef steak they love to hunt they love barbecue they love uh, their nation they'll have a flag outside their uh, house they'll go hunting they'll watch football on the weekends if if this is the entire culture of the country then no one should have a problem with individual rights so individual rights in the indian context is not going to work exactly like uh, usa lens of looking at everything in life is that group a is fighting group b i am sorry then the modern constitutional system which is based on individual rights hmm. is going to collapse okay mm, so what then you and if you think that the modern system and it is modern it is not ancient in the political realm it is modern whether you like it or not that's just a fact 
right. the spiritual realm it was always ancient right in our society not others right. other right. societies in the spiritual realm are fucking group obsessed mm-hmm. we as a society were always individualism obsessed in the spiritual realm mm. and just think about it why is india as a society so messed up because because of various kinds of things uh, islamic invasions which we didn't prevent because we were not as brutal and ag- aggressive and we didn't understand the threat properly which most indians even don't understand to this day then there's colonization which we uh, which a lot of indians looked as a counterbalance to islamic brutality and then there was uh, uh, fabian socialism created by nehru we are group group rights obsessed group rights obsession is just one very small part of it mm. that is why in india okay group rights uh, is 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 a legit argument if you take into casteism but even that happened only in the last 200 300 years when when the uh, when the european colonizers made hard and fast rules about it and i'm not saying just up until 400 500 years casteism was absolutely fluid that that isn't the case it started obviously uh, it 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 probably got uh, rigid since the 1100 ads but that one thing cannot be the cause of all these problems because all these problems occur in every country where colonization happens first of all everywhere where colonization has happened the, there are no survivors of colonization all of them have converted to the religion of the colonizer we are the only ones who have survived and therefore we have survived with some wounds it's better to survive with some wounds than to not survive at all kushal mehra people oppose a uniform civil code the most basic inane Take it up with Jaisai Deepak if you have the balls. Call him. Normal thing which looks at every person as an individual hmm. and not as a group. Hmm. See, th- Jaisai Deepak's qualm, by the way, is just for your information, that uh, for you, the, you the audience, that uh, Jaisai Deepak is of the opinion that whenever these uh, rules come into place, it's always going to disproportionately harm the Hindus because no one's going to listen to these laws from the other sides. Let's see uh, what Jaisai Deepak if he debates them uh, on uh, on this someday. will get to know the uniform civil code will not tell you ki bhai teri dhoti kaisi honi chahiye teri shaadi mein right right it is not controlling your ritual right 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 it's just giving the minimum basic law yeah, idea yeah that's it ye tu chhi shaadi kar rahe ho jisse shaadi kar raha hai kar right magar india mein bhai koi kaam teen biwiyan rakh sakti hai hmm. uh, divorce laws padh lo jara india mein see everybody uses the muslim straw man in india hmm. what if i told you the worst divorce laws in india are not muslim they're christian how come padho jao padho christian laws padho christian uh, ek agar christian aurat ko divorce he is not really saying what is his his problem with decoloniality he is in fact going on to say what are his problem with the with the abrahamic religions okay i have i was checking my phone for a particular reason because i had written down a point to a friend of mine exactly on this issue uh, about why us style individual rights might not work in india i wrote that uh, us style individual rights or any us style uh, societal or social model cannot and should not be replicated in in india because those things gave us success until nri leftists people who are sfi general secretaries in jnu and jadavpur university and hardcore communists all their lives and who believe in all sorts of regressive social policies us succeeded on individual rights and and did not start declining until these people went to india uh, went to usa okay it gave us success those policies individual rights gave us success until nri leftists and islamists got into their system they imported uh, these people from india whereas india already has plenty of these people in here so we are the chief exporters of wo- wokeism and identity politics which west and uh, usa doesn't understand we, they have got th- that disease from us we are already suffering from it and we are building up immunities to these problems they are just getting it now they are fucked we are the chief exporters of wokeism and identity politics and ideas like mediocrity is great if it if it further's identity politics like uh, you are you are bad at something still you get the job because your ancestor was oppressed so do it no problem these are the ideas now being applied by usa all in all any idea or policy that may be misused by or to empower abrahamic faiths to capture state power again in india is necessarily to the detriment of india and uh, should not be uh, used by india and there is a possibility that 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 might happen because that is what is happening in usa they are crumbling to in front of these ideas
चाहिए इंडिया में उसकी तो हालत खराब हो जाने वाली है अच्छा हालत खराब हो जाएगी उसकी इसलिए मैं कह रहा हूं कि यार ये क्या हो रहा है और आप कब अपने आप सी इज देर अ ग्रुप आइडेंटिटी यस इवन आई कॉल माय सेल्फ अ पॉलिटिकल हिंदू बट आई डोंट वांट द गवर्नेंस टू बी लाइक दैट द गवर्नेंस हैज टू ट्रीट ईच पर्सन एज एन इंडिविजुअल यूनिट एंड इफ यू थिंक योर सॉल्यूशन इज टू आई डोंट नो व्हाई ही इज अंडर दिस एक्सप्रेशन इंप्रेशन दैट डीकोलोनियलिटी इज द बाइबल ऑफ ग्रुप राइट्स that's the only aspect of decoloniality group rights group rights group rights there's no other aspect to decoloniality completely f- and i don't know how, where and how much uh, jsai deepak has actually written about uh, group rights or has asan balagangadhar ji written about it i haven't read his uh, works flip the entire way of every time they talk about decoloniality they bring it to group rights versus individual rights functioning of how society functions and and you know this this old trope the west sucks so bhancho do a straw poll in india na half the country wants to come here right yes that's because of their economics not because of their culture okay maybe a big, big bit because of their culture as well because you get to wear um, uh, some people just feel happy that we get to wear uh, crop tops on the streets but here if we wear it someone will maybe uh, cat call you and you can sleep around with 50 people and no one will utter a word those are the fun things about usa i guess What? but i'm not sure everyone wants to move there because of that i right if, if india is so awesome और ये अभी जिसको गाली देनी होगी दे देना मेरे को बाद में इफ इंडिया इज सो ऑसम आधा देश बैंक छोड़ के भाग के आने तो आधा देश थोड़ी हिंदुत्व है आइडियोलॉजी के साथ बिलीव करता है आधा देश का आर्गुमेंट क्या कहां से आ गया देखो तो यार इतना मजेदार है क्या मजा आ रहा है बता दो फिर क्या मजा आ रहा है अपने आप को झूठ तो बोलना बंद करो right. अच्छा ये छोड़ दो बड़ा फ्री स्पीच इज अ वेस्टर्न कांसेप्ट और ना ओके तुमने क्या उखाड़ लिया इंडिया में फ्री स्पीच नहीं था इसलिए हमने उखाड़ नहीं पाया ऐसा तो नहीं है वी कुडंट डू एनीथिंग फ्रॉम फॉर द लास्ट 75 इयर्स बिकॉज़ ऑफ नेहरूइज्म यहां पे कम से कम रह के इस एंड नॉट हैविंग फ्री स्पीच इज नॉट द ओनली आईडिया ऑफ नेहरू देयर आर सम अदर पॉलिसीज एज़ वेल लाइक स्क्रूइंग अप योर माइंड विद मार्क्सिज्म लाइक नॉट लेटिंग यू नो योर ओन हिस्ट्री लाइक क्रिएटिंग यू एंड ब्रिंग ब्रिंगिंग यू अप एज अ एज एन एज एन इनफीरियरिटी कॉम्प्लेक्स पर्सन विद नो सेंस ऑफ आइडेंटिटी एंड हिस्ट्री एंड कल्चरल प्राइड इस देश में लुक एट द आइरनी नाउ वी आर सिटिंग इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका दे हैव अ फर्स्ट अमेंडमेंट ठीक है राइट We can say whatever we want in India. Nehru ne aate saar mar di hamari. Hmm. Kya hai first amendment? So Nehru kaun sa decoloniality ka bada scholar tha? He is using Nehru to criticize decoloniality. What the? India. Basically, uh, public public order, uh, reasonable three days. Hmm. Nehru even hated the word reasonable. Rest- reasonable restrictions to dal de. He was like, no, I want restrictions. Hmm. Why should they be reasonable? Hmm. This is your first prime minister actively destroying free speech in India, actively destroying whatever semblance of sanity we had in that country, and we celebrate it as if free speech is a Western construct. Right, and that comes from the decoloniality mindset where it is a Western construct, it is the oppressor's construct, and that's the, therefore. So the folks in decoloniality saying we are not saying that. We never said what Western thing we should uh, keep or not keep. Keep or not keep. We are just saying we should acknowledge it is Christian Western. Yeah. Okay. First of all, ye folks in decoloniality, ye kon hai? How many people have you talked to uh, in the uh, in the Indian subcontinent who are working with decoloniality? Who are you basing this opinion on? Have you, okay, then maybe you are saying that you are uh, you have read all the books by decolonial scholars, and that's where you are getting this argument. Okay, let's say let's listen to this further. Uh, keep or not keep? Keep or not keep? We are just saying we should acknowledge it is Christian Western here, but there um, you know I oppose that too because mm. I can give you academic sources. of uh, books written by western academics that will show you in fact these interventions that you know for i don't use the word trad i mean you use the word trad i i don't use it but what you call trad these interventions that they call in western society are actually all inspired through pagan influences in this and those are not the things we criticize about the west we criticize the ideas of modernity and how that's used to destroy indigenous faith systems and cultures and ways of life if there was a modernity which did which did not meddle with our way of life we would not reject it and decolonial scholars would not reject it and jay sai deepak would not reject it the society hmm. ab kya karoge and i can, i forgot of course there are pagan influences in their culture which which they appropriate as as western or or or, or new ideas for example these ideas of humanism or everyone rips off orobindo every time they open their mouth every white liberal but most of them don't don't even uh, know it's coming from orobindo because it's so much filtered down so many people have ripped off orobindo over decades that now most of orobindo sri orobindo's ideas are not even acknowledged or given credit to but the name of the book if you want it uh, i would have to look it up in my phone because i'm complete 
It's a very interesting book. In fact, I read an op-ed on it also. Oh, these interventions that came into you know Western society where they challenged. Yeah, we are not talking about the interventions that came from uh, paganism. We are talking about direct uh, things that were born out of uh, of Abrahamism. The orthodoxy where the society kept on becoming more secular, more liberal, and plural were actually <laughs> their inspirations through paganism. Hmm. Yeah, and we are not going to use those solutions, not those lenses, to solve our problems and to to civilize us ourselves or to make us more secular because we have to remember as uh, as a person i'm going to remember as a person who uh, who applies the decolonial lens to everything uh, he thinks about that we were secular already and that was working out for us mm. uh. so we don't need to learn secularism from them which all, which is a statement that kushal mehra also agrees with but he's forgetting that right now Uh, so if that is the case, then I guess paganism is also a Western construct. Then right. So and and I can give you the source. You can look up the source. I'm not pulling it out of my ass. I'm giving you a proper academic book and not just one. We can you know give three, four academic books and papers written on this. Where is he discussing decoloniality? Really, he starts the criticism by saying decoloniality. How the classical uh, age was in Christianity was deeply influenced by uh, Platonic ideas and many other ideas, and in fact, all these influences in in Western society and even in, for that matter, which eventually becomes Western law, hmm. are are definitely clear. The first and foremost problem with uh, Abrahamism is rigidity. That's what we are mainly countering, and this idea that one size fits all, one solution fits everyone. That's the idea we are mainly against, and that cannot work for Bharat or India or Hindus. Really, you can link them to a pagan influence. So the entire claim of decoloniality that it is rational, modern. We need to rethink the ideas of rational, modern, because they are Christian. Western, because it is Christian. Hmm. And by the way, not just the decolonialists. Even Tom Holland, who's a very famous historian in in England, I think, and that's where Tom Holland is from. He makes that claim too. So this is a nice comfort. So Tom Holland will source them. They will source Tom Holland. Right. Tom Holland. So Tom Holland. If you look at his bibliography, who uh, one of the sources Tom Holland uses is Bala Gangadhar. Hmm. He is a famous uh, Indian uh, professor author in. Uh, it's I don't know how to pronounce it. It's G H E book called Heathen in His Blindness. Huh. It's an interesting book. Everybody should read it. I have nothing against Bala Gangadhar ji. I have a lot of respect for him. But the point is, I disagree with his worldview. Hmm. But it's very interesting how when trying to point out certain things, and I I remember sharing this uh, uh, with some friends offline too. And I was like, ah, interesting. He uses Bal Gangadhar, and then if I go and see Bal Gangadhar's work, he will use these kinds of authors. So it's a very convenient citation loop. These kinds of authors is not the same as exactly using Tom Holland. Mm. It's a very convenient citation loop. Like mm. you, I understand. You, you, you read. Okay, uh, this is a, f- I guess, a fair uh, criticism. But I don't know if you are, uh, if you are, may- let's say you are writing a book on Marxism. You are going to uh, quote Marxist sources. What are you going to cite otherwise? You're going uh, is Balagangadhar Balagangadhar going to cite Kushal Mehra for for establishing an argument on decoloniality? Reinforce each other's beliefs by citing each other. Right, right. I'm right. just using this as an example. So the point citation look to hona hi hai if you are presenting academic papers and and books that discuss academic subjects. Is the claim the fundamental claim of decoloniality is that what you call Western is actually Christian? Hmm. That itself is a flawed claim. Oh. Okay. No, everything Western is not Christian. the only the parts which are christian that's the parts we are criticizing and and saying that we don't need them on us okay roll back karte hain as uh, as always we have seen that kushal mehra probably doesn't understand decoloniality and as soon as possible he needs to have a debate with jay sai deepak on this jay jay he mahishasuramar